Hi, my name is Deepak and I'm here with a proclamation for you and about all of us. What is that proclamation you ask? It's that everybody can cook. Yes, you heard it right. Everybody can cook. That's right. If you know how to cook and if time has always been a bottleneck for you to cook at home, then I'm here with some recipes and ideas that will get you back in the kitchen cooking. If you're new to cooking and if you're a new student who is trying out adulting for the first time and is struggling hard to eat good food and make ends meet with the minimum salary that you make while you're a student, then you're in the right place. All my recipes are cheap, easy to make and it's not that difficult at all to get great tasting food from humble ingredients. That's right, you can cook canned foods boxed foods, jarred foods, and even frozen foods are awesome to have at home. We're not running a restaurant and this is fresh enough for us. It's better than uh, getting a takeout or even going to fast food and getting a meal or two. You can cook with the help of these because they are already half cooked or blanched and that would greatly reduce the time of cooking and make your recipes really really easy. So. When you have canned food, boxed food, jarred food, and frozen food at home, then you don't have to worry about making easy recipes at home. So let's see, what do we have here today? Today, I have a box of rice aroni. This is instant rice. All you need to do is look at the package directions and make the rice. Then let's see, what else can we do to go with the rice? Ah, I have some sweet corn here. And I have mushrooms. We could pair mushrooms and sweet corn and make a nice gravy to go with that rice. All that we need to do is make them and it's really quick. Let's see how we do that. Okay, first things first. Let's cook for rice and then in the meantime we could make the gravy. Um, when you open this packet of rice aroni, which is wild rice and long grain, you also have a seasoning packet inside it make sure that you include it and cook the rice as per the recipe as given behind the box. So this recipe calls for one two third cups of water and one tablespoon of butter or margarine. I personally prefer the flavor of good olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. So I'm going to substitute uh, olive oil in place of butter. So what I'm going to do first is empty the entire contents of this package into it and you can see how the rice is this long grain rice as well as um, wild rice which is black in color uh, it has a nice taste to it and then um, I'm going to take the contents of this package and then dump it all in there and then this is one two third cups of water that I've already measured I'm going to add that into that and finally I'm going to add about one tablespoon of good quality olive oil uh, I'm just going to eyeball that one tablespoon and that to me looks good enough alright now I'm going to sit this entire thing into my rice cooker and put it in the white rice cooking mode that is enough if you don't have a rice cooker you might as well use a pot or a pan on the stove and then use the exact same uh, method that is given behind the box it says that it takes 25 to 30 minutes for the rice to cook and that is ample time for us to make a mushroom and sweet corn gravy so pip pip okay the next stop is to chop some onions and garlic um, for one can of mushrooms and half a can, I'm only going to use half a can of this sweet corn uh, and put the remaining half in the fridge for use for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to use one onion and as much garlic as I like. I really like garlic so I'm going to use about uh, four cloves of this garlic and this also is peeled and ready for you to use and this kind of garlic is available in the supermarket and they stay well in the fridge as long as you keep it in the fridge and not outside okay let's start with the onion the onions are done 
I'm going to move them aside and next I'm going to prepare the garlic. So I take another chopping board. If you don't have another chopping board, just transfer the onions to a new uh, container and then you can use the same chopping board. I'm going to take one, two, three, four, yeah, four cloves of garlic. And uh, I feel that the best way to chop garlic is to first crush it. Two. Yeah, once you crush it, it becomes flat enough for you to hold it and then you can do a rough chop. Voila, your garlic is ready. So I'm not a chef, I didn't go to culinary school, so don't mind me chopping it like a hack. But it is chopped, that's what we want. We have our onions and garlic ready. I'm going to set that aside. The next thing we need to do is to open the can of mushrooms and then drain it. So I have a bowl and then I have a sieve and that's as easy as that is. You just need to open the can. This can is really nice that it has a, a thing to open it. I'm at loss of words for what it is. Just open it and there you have mushrooms, big chunky ones. Um, personally, I wouldn't chop it, but if you like uh, smaller pieces, you might chop it. I'm just going to drain all of that mushroom. Mm. Yeah, got almost everything. And the next thing is to open this can of sweet corn. All right. We have corn. The best part about using cream style sweet corn is that it develops the gravy without you needing to add anything into it. That itself uh, is enough. You don't need to make a roux, you don't need to cook uh, some flour and then add some liquid into it, none of that. So there it is. You have the onions, garlic, mushroom and then sweet corn. You need to remember that the sweet corn and mushroom already have some salt. So you need to adjust salt as you taste and go. All right now, I am going to clean everything up and then meet you at the stove. I have a pan here and I'm just going to add about one tablespoon of oil. I just eyeball it and I just want the oil to get hot. And in the hot oil, you should wait until the oil is a little hot. And in the hot oil, you need to put your alliums, which is garlic and onion, and then saute until they are golden brown. Okay, my pan has been on medium high heat for about a minute and then I think the oil is hot enough because it's become more fluid on the pan and first I'm going to chuck in the garlic. That's the sound you expect from hot oil on a hot pan. You should remember that once you do something like a stir fry or something that you need to fry generally on the pan, you should make sure that the pan is hot enough so that it doesn't become too soggy. Plus, you should make sure that the temperature of your pan and the oil stays stable. Now my pan is at a medium high. If you're using frozen onions, make sure that your oil is really hot and at high when you start. And then uh, once you start sauteing your onions, then you can go about and reduce it to a medium to medium high. Now the garlic is browning and I'm going to Chuck in all the onions that I chopped. Ooh, that's a nice smell. And I'm also getting an awesome smell from my rice cooker where that rice is cooking. It's almost done. It has five minutes. And then by the time we finish with this gravy, that rice will also be ready. And we can happily eat. Yeah. So I'm going to cook this till everything uh, turns golden brown. Well, it's important to remember that you do this. Stir once in a while. Otherwise, one side is going to get really dark and the other side is still going to stay pale. So make sure that you're actually putting in some elbow grease and wrist grease and making sure that everything browns evenly. Just let it go for a bit. You don't have to continuously do it. Do it for a minute and then rest it for two. And by the end of 
Uh, two of those two and one minute repetitions at the end of five minutes, six minutes, you would have uh, browned onions. The onions are slowly changing color and this would be the time to add a little bit of salt. Uh, salt that's just enough for the onions because the mushrooms and the cream sweet corn already have some salt in them. Don't over salt your food, just season it just a bit. Uh, if you ask me in terms of teaspoons and tablespoons for salt, I don't think I can tell you because each one's taste is different. Uh, I had a roommate who would eat food that, you know, is like drinking seawater, so it's up to you. As long as you stay healthy eating that much salt, go ahead and do it. Now it's almost brown. I'm going to add in some spices. Whatever you have, if you have black pepper, just use black pepper. I'm using paprika. And I'm going to add about two teaspoons to three teaspoons of paprika now because I really like the heat. If you don't like the heat, don't add that much. Just add about a teaspoon. And this will start to burn if your pan is really high or if you have very little oil or a combination of both. But you do need to cook the spices teeny bit before you add anything else. I'm also going to add some Italian seasoning which is just dried herbs. Gives it a nice smell. You eat with your eyes, nose and everything. Now the onions and garlic mixture is really ready. It's time for the mushrooms to go in. In they go. Again, if you want to chop it up, you can chop it up. I really want chunky mushrooms, so I'm keeping it. Because these are canned mushrooms, they're already far cooked. They're not going to become really soggy. But if you use fresh mushrooms, make sure that your pan is wide enough, or otherwise it's going to leave a lot of water, and then your gravy is going to be really runny. That's not what you want. So just saute it until everything warms through. I think we've given a chance for all of this to combine and heat up. This is really important to keep the pan hot. If you add a lot of ingredients at one time, the pan's temperature is going to go down and you don't want that. So you added mushrooms, and everything has come back to a particular temperature. Now I'm going to reach for the sweet corn and then dump half of the can into it. I'm going to quickly stir it in. Consistency is really important. Uh, the starch in the corn actually has gelled together and there is not much of a graviness to it. Um, what you could do is add a teeny bit of water. Not too much. And then adjust the consistency. You don't want it to be runny. You don't want uh, chunky portions and then a separate runny portion in the same gravy. You just want everything to be one cohesive dish and that's what we are really going for. The water addition has reduced the temperature of the pan so as soon as the pan comes back to a small little boil I'm going to switch it off. And we're almost there. I think the rice is ready. I just heard the rice cooker chirp. You see it started boiling again and that's it. I'm going to switch off the heat and let's go do the plating there. All right, it's time to eat. Oof. I have the rice here steaming. I'm going to switch you off and then take the rice and pop it 
down in the middle of the plate. There's enough rice and gravy for two people, by the way. And then I'm going to make a small divot. Okay, now let's go bring the gravy. Make way for hot steaming mushrooms. That's mushroom, corn, and a gravy. That was as simple as it gets. Mm, it smells really nice. I wish that we could transmit smells. Okay, and then And then it is always important to uh, make your eyes eat the dish. So I'm going to add a bunch of cilantro on top so that it looks nice. That's it. We have a wild rice, long grain rice, instant rice made and a gravy made all using very cheap ingredients. This is nutritious food. Bon appetit.